So in past videos, we performance tested fuel and oil additives using an engine on a lawnmower as well as a generator. However, because winter's here and it's really hard to use a lawnmower to measure performance, I decided to go ahead and buy a go-kart. Now I have access to a 2300 foot runway, aircraft runway, but it's made of grass, so it's pretty bouncy. So anyway, I decided to go out and buy this go-kart that has a good suspension system on it. However, when I did my pre-inspection of the go-kart, I noticed quite a few things wrong with it, but I was willing to buy it anyway, because to me, the trade-offs were worth it. So what I want to do today is just do a quick walk around of the go-kart, explain what's right with this thing and what's wrong with it, and go ahead and make some repairs. So let's go ahead and get this project underway. So I decided to buy a Manco Intruder go-kart. The reason I did this is because I'm sort of tall, I'm six feet tall, and this is a fairly long go-kart. I realize there are a lot fancier and better go-karts out there, but this is perfect for what I need. I just need something that will allow me to replace the engine with a Predator engine and something that has pretty good suspension. So this would be perfect for our needs. So what I want to do for an inspection is start in the front and work our way back. Let's begin with the tires. So when I was inspecting the go-kart, one thing I did was I lift the go-kart off the ground and I spun the wheel. And you can tell that the bearings are starting to go out in this. There's also a little bit of play in here. That's the play that we're seeing is from the actual spindle itself. The spindle has a grease zerk on it. It looks like it's been getting greased. However, it does appear to have some, some wear. Uh, the bearing, what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this wheel off and let's do a visual inspection on it to see what it looks like. Now one thing you could do on a sealed bearing is actually peel away the seal. So what you really want is a pick or something sharp and you just work underneath the edge of the seal. Pop the edge of the seal off. And again, this one is pretty dry. I can see why it's making a lot of noise. What we can do is pack that full of grease to help quiet it down some. Now all we have to do is just put the seal right back on it and press it in place. It really doesn't matter how much suspension you have. If your tires are overinflated, you're gonna have a rough ride. 3.6 PSI is the max operating pressure. Okay, its pressure is 10 pounds, so it's got way more pressure than it should have. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the pressure to get this down to about three and a half pounds. Okay, this is a lot tighter. So what I did was I tightened up the bolt, compressing down these two flanges to tighten things up a bit. So now there's very little play. So as I'm going down the, the runway and it's real bumpy, there won't be nearly as much vibration. There'll be a lot better handling as well. What you also want to look for, anywhere there's a moving part, there might be a zerk. Now there's a zerk right here, but I can tell this has not I don't think this has ever been greased, or if it has, it hasn't been greased recently. The Zerks can come in all sorts of locations, but the key is if the part looks like it's going to be moving, especially a larger part, it probably is going to have a Zerk, such as this. So I tried to pump some grease into this Zerk, and it's not allowing the grease to enter. So there's some sort of a blockage. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the bolt that runs through this assembly, pull the bolt out, and then try to pump grease into it. If not, this is not a removable Zerk that I can tell. It doesn't have a, a fitting for like a wrench. It's just round and I don't want to tear up the uh, end of it by using pliers or vice grips. So what I'm going to do is just remove this bolt and if I have to, I can find a real small drill bit and just drill it out. So I removed the bolt and I tried to pump some grease into this assembly and as you can see the bolts very dry so what I'm gonna do now is see why grease isn't going in there to see if this thing is blocked up okay it does seem like I got it to go through but there was definitely some resistance there so it was pretty difficult to work with there for a second seems like it's freed up now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bolt and clean it up with some brake parts cleaner and this will allow some space between the bolt and the assembly to allow grease to flow through. It might have just been way too tight. And so now what I'm going to do is just put this all back together and pump some grease into it. Okay, grease is flowing. Okay, let's go ahead and put that wheel back on and see how it sounds, see if it's any quieter. Much better, much smoother. 
The next thing we want to do is see if this front end is aligned properly. This doesn't have to be perfect, but we don't want to have these front wheels pointed in drastically different directions. What I noticed was some of the parts on the front end were not tightened down properly, which meant that things have probably loosened up over time and the alignment is probably off. So in order to find out if this front end is aligned, what I've done is I've used a couple of straight edges. These are levels, but they'll work. It's a straight edge. And I've clamped these tight so that the level is touching the rim. So what we'll be able to do is use this as a reference point up front and up back. And we're going to measure the distance across to the other wheel. And we really want these to be very close, within an eighth of an inch or maybe a sixteenth of an inch. But we don't want to have it off by an inch because that means that the wheels are either aiming in or aiming out and that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to measure to the outer edge and according to the outer edge this is about 43 and 5 eighths. In back it's 44 and a half. So this is way off. This front end needs some alignment. So instead of the wheels being aimed perfectly straight, the wheels are bowing in quite a bit by an inch from the front and the back. So I'm going to have to adjust this front end and try to get them closer to straight. So as you can see, this nut is loose. This is the way it was when I purchased it. And the other side, this goes to the tie rod, and the other side is the same way. So both of these were loose, and that's why the front end is way out of alignment. So what I'm going to do is loosen up the other side and go ahead and adjust this until we have alignment. Okay, so we've got this thing aligned, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, and um, Tighten up this lock nut so it doesn't move it on us at all. Once everything is tightened up, it's always good to take measurements one more time just to make sure that nothing moved and things are still in alignment. So we're at 43 and 3 quarters in the front and 43 and 3 quarters in the back. Okay, so these Manco go-karts are known for having front ends that have issues. So what I'm going to try to do is clean this up a bit. It's pretty sloppy and part of this is because this bolt could be tightened down to tighten things up. What I also want to do is remove this bolt and grease this. This does not have a zerk, but greasing it will extend the life of it and allow it to move in a more free manner. So I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt out real quick. Okay, so we got about a quarter inch of play right there. We've got quite a bit of movement. So this bolt is pretty oxidized and obviously it's pretty dry, so it's going to benefit from some grease. A lot of wear in this, it wouldn't hurt to replace this bolt, but for now what I'm going to do is just grease it and consider replacing it later. Okay, so I've cleaned this up quite a bit. What you probably can't capture on camera is that this seems to be somewhat beveled from all the wear. So adding some grease is going to just prevent it from getting worse. It's not going to restore any lost metal. Okay, I've tightened this down. As you can see, there's a lot less play. Things are greased. Things are moving freely. This front end is going to be a lot better as far as handling. Well, I didn't show it on camera for a while. I was having an issue with the brake pedal. And I went ahead and lubed up the brake pedal itself, the bolt, the, uh, the entire assembly. There is a spring. The spring might be getting weak, but everything is now moving freely. So the brake is in good shape in the front. Also, the accelerator cable, it moves freely. So on the back of the go-kart, this is equipped with a 7-horsepower Subaru engine. And it's 211 cc's, almost the same size as the Predator, which is a 212 cc engine. So when I bought this, I was told that a lot of the assembly back here was new and it had a new belt on it. So what we're going to do is take this apart and just see what we got. I want to make sure that everything is moving freely inside the assembly. So from the research I've done, these clutch assemblies are supposed to move freely. As you can see, this one does. This is working quite, quite well. It's smooth. Also, the springs should be nice and tight. There shouldn't be anything that's broken in there. One thing I noticed before buying the go-kart during my inspection is how loose this chain is. This chain is worn out. Also, there's a lot of side-to-side -side play. So the teeth on the sprocket are worn out as well. They're very sharp, and some of them are actually bent. I'm going to go ahead and remove the master link and take this chain off so we can get a better look at things. So this sprocket is pretty well worn out. The tips of the sprocket are actually bent some, so I'm going to have to replace this sprocket very soon. So in order to tighten the chain, there are four bolts on this particular go-kart underneath 
that allow the engine to slide forwards and backwards and therefore tighten up the chain. I want to go ahead and take this bearing out and just like we did with the other bearings, I want to add some grease. Now looking at this bearing, it actually looks like there's some grease in it. So this bearing was in much better shape than the front bearings, but since we already have it apart, we're just going to pot, apply some axle grease to this bearing and just add a little bit of extra into there just to add some life to it. So the Super Engine is a very good engine. It's made in Japan, but what I'm going to do is swap it out with the Predator engine because we're going to be using the Predator engine for all sorts of testing. And we're going to use it as sort of the standard for determining power gains or losses and overall performance. And I've got a lot of spare parts at the current time for Predator engines, so it makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out this engine. So to get this engine off, we have, I went ahead and moved one, one screw that goes to the throttle cable. I'm going to remove the second screw. The engine's already unbolted, just four bolts holding it down. Very easy to remove. Okay, so the Subaru's on the left, the Predator's on the right. These engines are very similar. They look almost identical because this is a Honda clone, and this essentially is a Honda engine for what it looks like anyway. They're very similar. The cases, everything pretty much matches up. Um, they're one cc apart. This is a 211 cc. This is 212. But um, I'm guessing I can probably even swap out carburetors. It looks like everything is the same. So I decided to bypass the governor. This is the governor setup. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show it on camera, but I'm going to go ahead and redo all of this so that when I hit the throttle, the throttle will go wide open without the governor kicking in and pulling the throttle back a ways. So right now the throttle is in wide open position. The job of the governor is, is the engine revs to a certain point it pulls it back a ways to keep it from over revving. So again, I would not recommend doing this unless you're willing to risk the well-being of your engine. And I'm willing to do that because some of the products we'll be testing, we won't know their true performance unless we have the ability to have this engine run at wide open throttle position. So I went ahead and bypassed the governor. And the way I did this is I removed that long rod that attaches to the governor arm and shortened it, reshaped it, and attached it to this assembly. I had to drill a couple of holes, one for a spring, one for this where this rod connects. And now this rod goes directly from this arm to the accelerator, to the carburetor. And as I push the accelerator towards the floor, you can see that it opens up things to the wide open throttle position and the governor arm no longer has the ability to pull back. So the rear tire pressure is supposed to run at 5 PSI, so let's see what the tire pressure is at. Okay, so it's about nine, 8 or 9 PSI, so definitely too high. I'm going to lower the pressure some. This will soften the ride quite a bit. The rear suspension also has a grease fitting, so it's important to get that as well. So everything's finished on this go-kart, so now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get it started and see how this engine idles. See if we need to adjust the idle set screw. Again, if you decide to do the governor bypass, make sure that this thing is returned to idle all the way or else, like I said before, the go-kart could take off on you.
anytime you buy something used that has moving parts, such as a go-kart, car, motorcycle, those types of things, I highly recommend going through it real thoroughly, at least as soon as you buy it, to make sure that everything's in good working order. Otherwise, you'll probably find yourself getting frustrated with a bunch of small things popping up that could have been avoided from a little bit of maintenance up front. Now, I'm not done with this go-kart. I still need to replace both sprockets and the chain, but it's in a lot better condition than when I started. Things are moving freer. The bearings are greased. The front end is greased. The tire pressure is appropriate. I even swapped out the engine, which I didn't need to do, but I did that so when we compare results with the Predator engine, if I accidentally destroy the engine that's on it now, the new Predator I just put on it, then we can always put a new one on and then continue to look at past and present results and have an apples to apples comparison. Do you like this style of video? If so, could you let me know? If you don't like it, could you let me know that as well? It won't hurt my feelings either way. I just want to know what people want to see. Thanks again for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to seeing you next time.